Welcome to this co uh, devotional from Covenant City Church. My name is Joe Bynum, and today we're going to be looking at the book of Genesis and talking about the institution of marriage. And the reason I chose this subject for today is because the institution of marriage in our days um, has been belittled as people shack up together or uh, decide that they just want to be in a relationship uh, as long enough, as long as things are going well, and then get out of the relationship and leave the other person high and dry. Everywhere you go, no, ma no matter where you are in the world, you can see that marriage is devalued. But what does God think about that? And what does God have to say about that? Well, the Bible says that the institution of marriage was something uh, that God uh, started before sin entered the world. It was given uh, to man as an institution to glorify God. It has now been perverted and distorted. And so even as Christians today, we can have an unbiblical view of marriage if we're not careful. So I want to look, uh, take a short period of time to look today at what the Bible has to say about marriage. Before I do so, let me pray for us. Father, thank you so much you know, for your word. Thank you so much, Lord, for the institution of marriage. And we pray, Lord, that uh, you would bless us, Lord, and help us to better understand this institution. And those of us, Lord, who are married, as well as those, Lord, who seek to enter into this institution one day, those of us who are Christian. Thank you so much, Father. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So Genesis 3, verse 20, I will pick up, and we'll see how marriage itself is a uh, symbol of the relationship that Christ has with his church. Uh, and if you remember here, before we begin, Adam, uh, everything that God created in the beginning was good. And the only thing that was bad, we were told uh, in verse 18, I think, was that Adam was alone. Now, uh, it, it's very important uh, to... Think about Adam's aloneness in the sense that he was not complete, right? There was something lacking, right? Adam was good in his being and good in his nature, but there was something missing that was uniquely a part of him, something he longed for that he did not yet know uh, how it would be quenched in his own heart. And so we pick up in verse 20, and there it says that the man gave names to all the livestock and the birds and of the heavens, and to each and every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not found a helper suitable for him. So the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon the man. And while he slept, he took one of his ribs and closed up its, its place with flesh. And the rib that the Lord God had taken from the man, he made into a woman and brought her to the man. Then the man said, This at last is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman. Because she was taken out of man. Therefore a man shall leave his father and his mother and hold fast to his wife. And they shall become one flesh. And the man and his wife were both naked and not ashamed. Uh, for those of you who are single out there today, uh, you probably never thought about this or, or never even noticed that Adam was first alone. Adam does not receive immediate gratification. Even though he was the first man created on earth, he spent a period of time alone with God before he was granted a wife. And so those of you who have been single for some times, so you probably could appreciate this because Adam himself had a period where he waited, where he was not satisfied. There was something missing and he longed for something uh, uh, to complete him or someone to complete him. And so uh, God is uniquely concerned with uh, our hearts and uniquely concerned with giving us those things that will complete us, those of you who desire a spouse. And so uh, I think that's important that we recognize that Adam was first alone. And God gave him a job, right? Adam worked for God. God had things for him to do in the earth uh, for his glory. And Adam was given the particular job of naming the animals. Now, once he did that, he realized, I think he became more conscious of the fact that, wait a minute, I'm looking at all these animals that I'm naming, and each one of these animals has a mate. There is an opposite... Uh, they're made of the same flesh, but there is the opposite sex, right? They're male and female animals. And so Adam was becoming more and more in tune with the realization that I'm alone and there is not a suitable helper for me. And so God, uh, uh, in the midst of Adam's wonder, began, uh, began to meet Adam's need. After Adam worked for a period of time for God, God met Adam's need. First, he put him to sleep. And he took from him, you'll notice it says he took from Adam's rib a woman, right, from the womb of Adam, out of his side. 
Now, that's interesting because we are told that, that um, we're told here that there's a union between the man and the woman. She's taken from him. And if you think about that, uh, there's a union, the Bible says, between Christ and the church. The church is the body and the Lord himself uh, is the groom, right? The church, the bride, and the Lord, the groom. And so there's a unique spiritual union that we have with the Lord. And it will also be a physical union. Uh, when we uh, see him at the resurrection. And so this union, this mystical union that takes place between a man and a woman in the process of marriage uh, is a gift of God that points to a deeper union that we have as Christians with the Lord Jesus Christ. And so we're told here that um, when Adam sees Eve, he breaks out into a poem. And the reason that he does that uh, is because he is overwhelmed by the glory of God and, and the grace of God to him. He says, at last, this tells us that Adam has been longing for completeness, longing for someone to make him whole. And he, he breaks out into a poem. At last, this is bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman. He is ecstatic at this beautiful creature that God has created. She completes him. And then God himself, uh, like the father leading the uh, uh, bride to the groom, uh, gives Eve to Adam, and he performs the very first wedding ceremony. And God himself sets the parameters for marriage by saying, therefore, a man shall leave his mother and his father and cleave to his spouse. That is, leave and cleave. That doesn't mean we stop loving our parents as Christians, but it does mean that we leave their authority, right? The immediate authority of their home, the immediate authority that they have over us as um, our authority figures given to us by God, we give that due respect to them all of our lives, but we cling to our wives. They become our family, uh, and we. And there are many cases in the Bible of this where uh, you know Abraham was called to leave his father's house uh, with his wife along, uh, along with all of his servants and things like that. And so you leave the authority of your parents. You don't stop loving them and taking care of them, but you and your wife now start making decisions on your own. This there's so many cultural aspects that go into that, especially here in Indonesia. But um, And we can talk more about that if you want to. But uh, God calls us to create family unions in the world. And I'll tell you what, when the marriage union is destroyed or distorted, society cannot function. That's why we have so many problems in America and in Indonesia at large because people have distorted marriage. And it is a gift of God for a society to have married couples glorifying him uh, in the world. And so um, we move on here where it says, uh, the man and his wife were naked and not ashamed. Um, I think that this is, and it's just my opinion here, but I do think that this also points us to the union that we have with Christ. Because of we're united with Christ, right? Because Adam and Eve were united, they were not ashamed. And I think when we're united with Christ, all of our shame and guilt and sin will be removed and we will be complete in his presence. I think we can look forward to a day when we will be with the Lord Jesus Christ and all of our sin will be removed. Not that Adam and Eve had sin, but I think the fact that they were complete and whole in that union and they were not ashamed, I think that that points us to a greater union in Christ. The fact that we will live in his presence uh, free from sin and all of the things that sin does to us. And we will enjoy uh, our bridegroom forever and ever and ever, as well as relationships with one another will be restored as well. Um, this was just a brief little study on marriage. If you have questions, I would love to answer them. Uh, just contact me on WhatsApp or whatever. We can talk further about these things. Thank you so much for your time. Uh, I'll see you next week.